So now let's kind of translate that example or a similar kind of situation into kind of a game theory framework and think about how we can think about um, these strategic situations with game theory. So game theory Again, let's just give a maybe a, a bit longer definition than what we gave before in kind of the introduction to this uh, to this module. So it's the theory that studies um, decision making in which one player. Um, anticipates their reactions of other players when they're making their decision. Anticipates the reaction of other players um, in its own actions. Oops, maybe let's in its own actions. And so if we want to think about applying game theory to this kind of duopoly or this oligopoly framework, um, it can be applied to lots of different things, we can think of um, how to apply it to this situation. Apply to oligopoly. So now the players are the firms. The game is going to be played in this market. So we have a market where um, we're producing some kind of good. These players have, have strategies. Um, and their strategies are going to be about either price or quantity for now. So strategies. price or quantity are those two strategies we can we can think about changing and the payoffs from their actions or what they're trying to maximize they're trying to maximize their payoffs and in this case their payoffs are just their profits So now I'm going to quickly erase this and we'll kind of apply that kind of duopoly example where you have two firms and we're going to kind of simplify their strategies where they kind of have two different strategies. They can compete against each other um, and produce some amount of, of quantity or they can collude and produce each produce half the monopoly outcome. So let's quickly erase this and, and kind of a, have a simple application of this game theory to a duopoly. So to get kind of familiar with this game theory environment and how to set up um, what we're going to end up calling payoff matrices and things like that, let's think of a really simple environment. Let's think of a simple environment or situation. So we're going to have two firms, firm A and firm B. So it's a duopoly, just like the example we just saw with the demand schedule. We have two strategies, two strategies. One strategy is going to be to compete, and the other is going to be to cooperate or to collude. Cooperate slash collude. If they compete, what they're going to do is produce each produce two thirds of the monopoly outcome. So together they're producing more than the monopoly, right? If each of them produces two thirds, they produce you know four thirds of the monopoly outcome. So more than um, more than the monopoly outcome. So produce two thirds monopoly 
output, I should say. Outcome, output. Each. They each have these two strategies, so each one would produce two thirds of the output. And if they cooperate, they're gonna try to, you know, they're colluding, so they're trying to split the monopoly outcome uh, or the output. So they're gonna each produce half of the monopoly output. So those are the two strategies. So we're gonna keep it really simple with two strategies. And so if they're each producing two thirds of the output, that means we're gonna have a really high Q or a higher Q, which means a lower price. So their profits are gonna be you know, relatively lower here, where if they're each splitting uh, the monopoly output, then they're gonna have you know, a low quantity, which is gonna result in a higher price. All right, so let's think about how to translate these strategies into some kind of um, graphical representation of what's happening, or a diagram, or a payoff matrix, as we're going to call it. So we're going to assume some kind of profits associated with these different combinations of strategies. So the first thing we're going to do is put our, our two players here. So we're going to put firm A here and firm, so that's going to be like a row player and firm B is going to be the second player. And they each have two different strategies. So firm A can either uh, cooperate um, or compete. And firm B has the same different strategies, has the same two strategies. They can cooperate or compete. Or maybe I'll do, uh, this is a better way of dividing everything up. And so we have these four different outcomes that we could have. That we could have. So over here, maybe I'll make sure this doesn't go too high. Firm A and firm B then we say what their strategies are. So there's two strategies for each player. And then what's gonna go in these four spots is the outcome from each of these players playing their strategy. So for instance, if firm A and firm B both cooperate, we're gonna be in this cell right there. And in this case, they're gonna be splitting the monopoly out uh, they're going to be splitting the monopoly output, which means they're going to be splitting the monopoly profits. They're going to be earning a lot of profits because they're colluding. So they're going to split, let's say, 20 each. And so this is, this is basically the payoff cell. So this is the payoff cell associated with both of them cooperating. So they come together right here. This first number is going to be firm A's payoff. And this second number here is going to be firm B's payoff. So the first payoff is for the row player, the second payoff is for the column player. So here they both would get, you know, twenty thousand dollars, whatever, 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 like whatever units those are in, but twenty. That's their payoff. They each get twenty. And now let's say, let's look at the other extreme and say they both compete. Well, if they both compete, they're they're going to be producing a bunch of. Um, a bunch of output, so it's gonna be a high Q and a lower price as we talked about, and so their payoffs are gonna be slightly lower. And so let's say they each get 17 if they both choose to compete. And now we need to fill out the last two cells, which is when they have different strategies. So if firm A is competing, they're gonna be producing um, two thirds of the output but firm B is only producing one half of the output. And so firm A is gonna have a higher payoff than firm B because they're producing more quantity. And together they determine the price, right? And so let's say the payoffs here are 22 for firm A and 15 for, for firm B. And let's make this symmetric and so if firm A cooperates, but firm B competes, that means those payoffs from here are reversed. 
Firm A is only going to get 15, and firm B gets 22. So this is what a payoff matrix would look like. So you should be able to think about you know, getting certain amount of in, getting certain information and being able to draw a payoff if I give you the numbers of these payoffs. And think about how to set it up in terms of putting the strategies and the payoffs together. Now that we have you know, these strategies and these payoffs in this matrix, we can think about what firms should do. And we can think about applying this concept of Nash equilibrium to this payoff matrix.